Hey everyone, welcome to my next lesson about parameters in Revit API. Make sure to watch all the previous parts. And before getting started, if you want to learn all topics regarding Revit API in depth and enroll in my paid Revit API course, you can reach out to me via email in the pinned comment. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, like the video and leave some comments. So let's get going. Now it's time for us to actually work with this via code, work with these definitions and get them from project or external file, like your parameter file in the code and simply access all the values. So what we learned is that we need to get the binding map from the document. So you go parameter bindings and eventually we get the binding map and we get access to here. Not here, but if I go to project parameters, this is where we get our access. This is what we get our access to. So can we, like, what is a binding map? It's really important for us to uh, go to each of them and kind of analyze it. Let's, okay, I have a lot of there. Uh, I'm going to just go there. So step by step, binding map. So, and analyze each thing. So first of all, it is a definition binding map. So we know that that stands for inheritance and it is a definition binding map. So that means it is that one, that object. So it has all the things that that class contains. And that class is a simple enumeration. So a map that contains mappings of parameter, de of parameter definitions to parameter bindings. So because we see that it's enumeration, that means that we can iterate through this, right? So we can easily iterate through it. But what object are we going to get in here? So can I iterate through this? Let's check out binding map. And here we have the object, we have the type of object. So we're not kind of quite sure what it is. So I'm going to name this unknown, right? Unknown, just for us to make it happen, right? Because we don't know, like, Again, you shouldn't have that very you, you shouldn't have that name. It's just for us, so we're gonna see what it is. Let's get its type. So I'm gonna go, I wanna put this to the task dialog show message, for example, and I'm gonna say unknown, get type, and let's get the name of that type. Let's see what we're gonna get here. Again, we can use we can find the command called working with parameters demo. Let's run this instance binding okay so basically if we go through each of them we have instance bindings right so what what binding is responsible for binding is a class that is responsible for storing for knowing what categories to use and whether it should be type or instance so here if we go back this is what we get but how do we get our definitions? This is where understanding enumerators and knowing about what an iterator comes into play. Again, this is something that goes beyond the course and you know we cannot cover all topics related to C Sharp. Uh, but again, I just want to give you some, some things that you can actually explore on your own and understand what it is. The first one is that link. So basically about an I enumerator interface and see some examples. Also, if you want, you can check out how this can be built. So here there is a call, there is a concept called design patterns. To put it simply, it's just design patterns are they're like an, an elegant solution for solving a particular problem. Here you can read up about what is the usage examples like why we why would we want to use this here you can see a common uh, like how to implement this all the things you can find them here so you can read about this understand it better so we won't waste our time understanding what it is and how does that work but what i want to show you is that what i want to tell you is the most thing is the most important thing that when we have this binding map we can actually go through each object 
and access more than one values in the particular case. So and even if you go here and read up about this, you will see some concept of uh, current and key. Again, check this out on your own, but we're going to see an example in Revit API and how does that work. So here, as you can see, once we have this definition binding map, we can get its iterator. So by getting its iterator, you can go through each of the element and get the current and key property. And current will give you the uh, current will give you the uh, binding, and key will give you the definition. Again, let let me show you how does that work. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's not that complicated as it sounds. So we can get the binding map, right? Let's kind of get the iterator. So I don't want to use a simple for each. I can because it's an enumeration, but I want to do a bit differently. I can get the iterator of this, so forward iterator, which will give me the definition binding map iterator. And to go through this, what we're going to do is that we're going to use while iterator move next. What does it mean? So here we're getting the iterator. And again, if I go there, so here we have that iterator, right? And think of this as having that list and using that for each, but in a little bit of a different manner. So to go to the next element, we simply use move next. So imagine that you're being at the first element, you've done something to it, you grab the information that you needed for it, and now we can simply say, you know what, I want to go to the next element. I want to move to the next. And as you can see, what is great about this is that it returns Boolean. So first of all, we have move the iterator one item forward. That means what it does. But what does it return? Like why it returns Boolean? So it returns true if the iterator was successfully moved forward one item and the current property will return a valid item and false will be returned if the iterator has reached the end of the map. So it's kind of great for us and that's the reason why I'm using while because what while does is that it will go inside of here, so inside of here, if that is true. So imagine that you have five elements. You go through the first one and it returns you true because, you know, it's not the last one. So it will return you true once you hit the end. So for example, if you have five elements and you've reached the fifth element, it will return false and you won't go in there. So we can actually go like this right now. So we can say, give me the binding and that'll be uh, iterator uh, current and you can say as binding and then you can go with the internal definition because we know that each project parameter that we've added doesn't matter whether it came from the like share parameter file or you've created it it in project parameter like as a project parameter type it doesn't matter it will be as an internal definition so we go iterator and we say key and we have it as a definition as the base class class but for the time being I'm okay with this and we can go with the task dialog show message for example and I can say like let's put like binding again binding get type a name here it says that it can be possibly null so I'm gonna say if it's not null do this so that's kind of the check that we can do. So basically what it does, it, it asks whether it's null or not. And if it's not, it's going to get its type. And then what we can do is that we can also pass the internal, like the internal definition or just definition, put the name there. There we have it. So let's run this and see if that works. So let's go to Revit and run this. As you can see, we have that, that that is an instance binding and the name of this is occupant. So it's kind of pretty easy to get them, right? So now we can see how we can access all of that information. So to get all the internal definition, it's not that complicated because we have a property that is called parameter bindings. And then we can simply use the iterator of this. Again, read up a bit about iterators but if you don't want to, but I would recommend that you do, but you can simply 
think of this as that way that sometimes in this kind of scenarios when we go through each of the elements we may access more than one value so when we go with the for each we simply get the element itself but here the iterator can provide more than one things to us in the, in the given uh, example that provides the binding so it goes through each of the and that is logical right because it goes through each of the parameter and it tells us not only do I know the definition of it but I also know what kind of binding did we use there what categories do, did we use there whether it's instance or type and what group parameter it's under so it just provides us more than one information in there and we simply use the move next from the iterator instance. We, we use move next method, which goes to the next element each time and returns us if there are, there are any elements left. So that's the way why we're not continuing going further and further because we have stopped at some point. So that's the way for you to basically just get all definitions and bindings from a project uh, document. That's it for this lesson. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and have a beautiful day.